Today we're inside the 2015 Infiniti Q50 taking a look at the latest infotainment and navigation system by Infiniti. It is this two screen infotainment and navigation system where we have two different touch screens. So this is a little bit different than Acuras for instance where we have a single touch screen and then a regular old non-touch screen above it. Before we take a deep dive into the system, I will remind you that there is a complete review on the 2015 Infiniti Q50S on my channel as well. And this video is shot in 4K, so I encourage you to use the higher resolution versions so you'll be able to see some of the detail a little bit better. As I said, the system does feature two touch screens, but it also features some physical buttons as well. We have a climate button, menu button, audio button, track forward, backward, input buttons, as well as tune channel folder buttons right there. In addition to all of that, we also have a control wheel right behind the shifter. So this allows you to have a wide variety of different ways of inputting things into the system. To show how these work together, we have that control wheel down there. You can actually scroll around, as you can see, to change, for instance, your audio source right there on the top screen. We can also touch that touch screen right up top as well. And we have a track folder list up there. We can touch that in that display. Uh, but we can also do that on the lower display. So we can actually click that, get that same thing, click that lower display right down there. Now the lower display does not use the control wheel down below the gear shift. It actually is only the touch inputs, but it does offer scrolling features as you can see right like that. This control method is a little bit more intuitive than Acura's once you get used to it. On first glance, it does seem a little bit odd, but again, once you get used to it, it does work a little bit better. Now we can also control that if I move this camera over here to the steering wheel via this control button right here on the steering wheel itself. So I can click OK on the button right there and you can see that the screen has actually changed. And now I can use this button right there on the steering wheel to actually go through that same list and do exactly the same thing that I was doing over there via the touch screen or via the touch button. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, choose Bluetooth audio right there for my input. And you can see that I have a folder track list even on Bluetooth audio and I can scroll through that as well. Let's zoom in for a closer look at these two screens on their own. I've moved to the home menu by pressing the physical home button. You can see I have direct access to system apps right here as well as certain navigation commands. So I can directly access my Bluetooth phone right there. I have a phone book. I can actually get a number keypad right here on the screen and dial that way. Now some functions in the system are disabled while you're in motion. It's something I dislike a little bit because a lot of the luxury entries allow you complete access to everything while you're in motion. But we do have a full featured system including text messaging support if your device supports it. Infinity Connection is sort of like Infinity's version of General Motors OnStar with a few added features as well. So you can see we do have a calendar, you can connect to the voice services, and that's the voice concierge service that is standard with the Q50, or we can actually access Google Send a Car, things like that. You'll notice that we have additional screens to the left and to the right. To the left, we have room for future expansions, so those are just blank right now. But if you move on over to the right, we have our Infinity Drive Mode selector. This is how you can adjust the personal mode in this system. So the personal mode is the drive mode selector and allows us to change the way the engine transmission feel, etc. So you can actually change the way that engine transmission work right there in the personal mode. You can also change the way the steering feels. This allows you to choose between all the various ways you can have the steering effort as well as the steering response. So steering effort is what it sounds like. It's how heavy is the steering. And then response is actually how quick the ratio is because our version has the direct adaptive steering. You can actually change the steering ratio. It would be the ratio of the steering wheels movement to the actual car's wheels movement. Active Trace Control, this helps you in corners. It actually applies brakes on one side of the vehicle to help you go around the corner a little more smoothly. And you can, of course, reset the settings there as well. Edit User allows you to link keys to the vehicle so you can have certain personal preferences tied directly to that user like presets, etc. We can alter the way our driver assistance systems work, our forward distance control. Uh, we have our lane keep assist and our blind spot monitoring, etc. We can get Sirius XM info. We can also buy apps with the App Garage. We have a quick guide for the vehicle, clock, compass. You can also access other apps in the system depending on what you have set up with it as well. We have a driving performance app on our particular model. In the performance meter, we have a few different looks. We can have our fuel gauge, we have our G meter there, cornering Gs, compass, steering, etc. If you want to configure this display, you can click on some of the gauges and then change what exactly they do. Entering a destination in the system uses primarily this lower screen. So we hit the home button, you'll see that we have navigation. We can do points of interest, home, destination, street, address, etc. We can also touch right up here to get this menu up. And then either using the control wheel or our fingers, we can actually search for nearby places using this top screen. Or you can do that same sort of thing down here with points of interest on this particular display. Or we can go back and we can actually enter a street address right here via this system. So for instance, we'll enter one here. You can see that this address is very speedy when you're entering an address in this fashion.
You'll notice that we now have that address showing right up there on top. We can click that OK button, there and then it will navigate us to it. Road. Now that the address is entered in the system, you can see that we are given three different routes. We have the fastest route, energy saving, and shortest distance. We have a little bit of route information up there and an overview of the destination. So we're just going to go ahead and choose fastest route. Now that that route is entered, you'll notice that we do have XM Sirius traffic information displayed on this display. You can actually get turn-by-turn -turn instructions via these buttons down here on this display as well. So the two displays work in coordination on the navigation system as well. This is a little bit different than the Acura system. You can also click the route button and edit your route, recalculate the route, those sorts of things right down there. Both displays do support touching and dragging, and they also support a few different motions. So you can actually pinch to zoom on the display right like that as well. Now these two displays are not quite the same technology because this one does use an anti-glare coating and this one does not. So they do look a little bit different in person. Going back to the audio source here, you can see that we do have source selection right up top. We have Bluetooth audio, iPod, the optical disc player, AM, FM, and Sirius XM. With my iPod connected, we do have complete voice command ability of the iDevice, like you'll find actually in most mass market vehicles or the Acura systems. That's not very common in luxury vehicles, so you can do that in the Lexus IS, but you cannot do it in the BMW 3 Series or the Mercedes-Benz C300 this time. We also have full access to our playlists, our albums, our artists, genres, etc. right there via this display. We have access to a very similar set of things as well if we actually connect to our device via Bluetooth. So we're not limited based on the physical connection to your device. Clicking on the gear icon is where we find things like the day, night, and dimmer settings for these two displays. Kind of an interesting twist, these two displays do not dim along with the instrument cluster on the driver's side. So they do have separate dimmers from that and actually from one another as well. So you can actually adjust the dimming on the upper screen separately from the lower screen. It's also where you'll find bass, treble, balance, etc. You can also click the volume adjustment button and we get audio volume. We also get voice volume, guidance volume, etc. Overall, I rank the system above the Acura two screen infotainment system because this does appear to be much better integrated. These two displays do very separate things for the most part. So you actually can browse your audio source in this lower screen and leave this upper screen solely for navigation. And that's not something you can do in the Acura system because the Acura system really uses this bottom screen to just change input methods. But if you want to browse your iPod, you have to use the upper screen. This particular system, you can do everything on that iPod using this lower screen, or you can actually do that on the upper screen as well. It's kind of an interesting twist because you can do both. Similarly, we can also enter navigation destinations on this upper screen or the lower screen. So the two screens work together or separately depending on what you want to do. Also, in an interesting twist, we have multiple ways of interacting with this system. So we have the actual touch screens here, or we have the toggles on the steering column that we can use right over there, or we have that scroll wheel in the center console. Infinity is really the only company out there that allows you to choose your input method in this manner. I didn't find this system quite as intuitive as BMW's iDrive, and the mapping software is not quite as attractive as iDrive either. However, it is more fully featured in some ways than iDrive because we get all those connected apps, we get the Infinity connection, and we also get the ability to voice command our music library that you don't find at this moment in iDrive. The system is much more intuitive than Lexus's remote touch joystick that you find in the Lexus IS. This takes an awful lot less eye time off the road, especially because you have that control on the steering wheel. It clicks up, it clips down. You don't have that mousey hanging around on the screen. We also have more screen real estate going on than you find in the Lexus. I think that overall, I'm going to rate this my second favorite in the luxury segment. I still prefer the way BMW's iDrive looks overall. I think it is a little bit more intuitive than this two screen setup for most functions. Although we do get more screen real estate in this particular system. So if that's what you're after, this is definitely going to be tops in your list. Also, if you really value those voice commands for your media library, this is going to top BMW iDrive. For me, I prefer the aesthetic in BMW iDrive a little bit more than that particular feature, although it is very compelling. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the Infinity Two Screen Infotainment and Navigation System Review. If you want to know more about the Infinity Q50S, which is the vehicle that we are inside at the moment, you'll find that complete review on my channel as well.